Today I'm going to show you the GFM with decimals. So geometric form of decimal multiplication, AKA GFDM. So <clears throat> what you'll need today is your graph paper notebook, a pencil, a ruler. If you don't have a ruler, you can use a notebook or other thing for straight or something, or a notebook folder, something for a straight edge. You also need some colored pencils. With GFDM, you will need more than just green, red, and blue. We will also need pink, light blue, and light green. Now, essentially, when, what we're gonna be doing here is creating a miniature decimal checkerboard on our paper to help us <clears throat> solve these problems. So this first problem I have here <clears throat> is 356 times two and 43 hundredths. So just like I would regular GFM, I'm gonna get out my straight edge. I'm gonna start down a little bit here. And I'll start down a little further just to make sure I have enough space. And I'll start with my multiplicand, which here is 356. So I'm gonna make a dot, count over three, one, two, three, make a dot. 50, one, two, three, four, five, make a dot, and six, one, two, three, four, five, six, make a dot. Now I go up for my multiplier, <clears throat> and I start with the smallest uh, category here, which in this case is the three. Uh, one, two, three, make a dot. Next is our tenths, which there are four. One, two, three, four, make a dot. And our units, one, two, oh, just two, make a dot. Now we'll use our straight edge to turn our right angle into a rectangle. And then draw lines where each dot that we drew is. So we've got some here, I wanna make that a little thicker so it's easier to see in this camera. Then we have here. And here. Okay. All right. So now we need to label these parts. So the three down here represents the 300 from the multiplicand. Uh, here we have five, which represents the 50 from the multiplier. And the six here represents the six from the multiplicand. Then going up, we're using our multiplier. So the first number is the three, and that represents not just three, but three hundredths. So we'll run it right that like this. Next, we have four, which represents four tenths, which we would write like this. And then up, we go on to our two, which just is two units. Now this is a little hard to see. I'm gonna bold that a bit more. All right, now we get to the fun part, the coloring. And this is where we need uh, other colored pencils than just red, green, and blue. Here I drew a little key for us. So our green represents our units, our blue represents tens, red is our hundreds. Light blue represents our tenths. Uh, our pink represents our hundredths. And our green, light green, represents our thousandths. So let's start with the easy stuff. We know if we multiply a unit times a unit, we're gonna get a unit. So I'm gonna shade that in green. Then when we multiply a 10 times a unit, we get a 10. So I'll shade that in blue. And then if I multiply 100 times a unit, I get 100. So I'll shade that in red. Now here's where things get a bit more interesting. 
because we're multiplying now a unit times a tenth. A unit times a tenth gives us a tenth. So I'm gonna color that in our lightest blue. If you're not quite sure how I got that, you can just write out the multiplication. One times 0 0.1 and you would see that we end up getting 0 0.1 again. I'll leave that there, I'll show my work. Next, I'm gonna multiply a 10 times a 10th, which gives us a unit. Next, I'll multiply our hundreds times our tenths, which gives us a 10. Moving down, now we're going to multiply a unit times a hundredth. Now a unit times a hundredth is a hundredth. So I'm going to shade that in pink for our hundredths. Then if I multiply a hundredth times a ten, I get a tenth. I'm gonna shade that in. And then I multiply a hundred times a hundredth and I get a unit, units. Lovely. So now I'm gonna write in my multiplication. So I'll start here. Uh, you can really start anywhere uh, because we're gonna do the adding up of the pieces separate. So I'm just gonna start, um, I'm gonna start with my unit. So I know six taken two times gives us 12. I know 50 taken two times. So five times two is 10, 10 tens is 100. Now I multiply 300 times two and three times two is six hundreds. Now I'm going to move on to my next row here. Units times tenths. So I have six times four tenths and I know six times four is 24. And, but now you might be wondering, where do I put the decimal point here? Well, we have 24 tenths, and we know that 10 tenths equals a unit. So if there's 24 of them, that means we have two units and four tenths, so our decimal point goes right there. It's also helpful to see that in our multiplication problem, we have only one number to the right of a decimal point. That's gonna help us know our answer has our number one over to the decimal point. Now we multiply 50 times 4 tenths. And I know 5 times 4 is 20. And we have 20 units. And so, well, actually the rule about the, the decimal point doesn't quite fit here, I'm realizing, because I know that five, uh, 50 times four tenths is 20, because uh, five times four is 20, and we have 20 tenths, or 20 units, because we're in the units category, because we're green. Uh, so yes, it's 20, so ignore what I said earlier. Now we have 300 times four tenths. 300 times 0 0.5, I realized I forgot all my equal signs. Silly Miss Christine. Uh, 300 times 4 tenths. So I know 3 times 4 is 12. And we have 12 tens. So our answer is going to be 120. 12 tens. Now we're going to multiply 6 
times three hundredths. And I know six times three is what? 18. I have 18 hundredths. So I'm gonna write 18 hundredths. So that means that looks like this, 18 hundredths. Now I'm going to multiply 50 times three hundredths. And I know five times three is 15, and we have 15 tenths. So if I have 15 tenths, and I know that 10 tenths equals a unit, my decimal point's gonna go between the one and the five. And then if I multiply 300 times 3 tenths, or I'm sorry, 3 hundredths, I know that 3 times 3 is 9, and our answer is 9 units. So now what we need to do is add up our numbers. So I'm going to start up in the upper right-hand corner here. And I'm going to write my numbers, make sure to line them up by category. So decimal points and commas are going to be helpful. So 600 decimal point. I'm just going to put the decimal point there because I know that the zero represents the units. And I know later on I'm going to have decimal point numbers. And it's going to help me line them up. 600, 100, 12, 120, 20, 2.4, or 2 and 4 tenths, 9, 1 and 5 tenths, and 18 hundredths. So I'm going to write that. If it's helpful for you, you can fill in these spots with zeros because putting zeros on the other end of the decimal point doesn't change, doesn't change the value of it at all. I'm gonna add that up. All that plus eight is eight. Four plus five is nine, plus one is 10. So I'm gonna write the zero, carry the one. One plus two is three, plus two is five, plus nine, is 14 plus one is 15. So I'm gonna write the five, carry the one. One plus one is two, plus two is four, plus another two is six. And six plus one is seven, plus one is eight. And I'm just gonna carry, because we added, I'm gonna carry my decimal point down. So we find that when we multiply 356, times two and 43 hundredths, our answer is 865 and eight hundredths.